Okay, let us take another example. In the earlier example, the velocity component v x depended on y and there was no y component and so the normal strain rates were 0. Okay. They were 0 here, the diagonal elements represent the normal strain rates and they were 0. So, now let us take an example exactly uh, which has the other component namely the normal strain rate, but does not have shear strain rate and rotation that is a use of uh, that is objective of this example. Okay. So, velocity field B is given by A x i minus A y j. So, it is a two dimensional velocity field you have both the x component and the uh, y component. What does it physically represent? Represents flow in a corner that is what is shown here in quadrant 1 and quadrant 2. So, let us take quadrant 1 for easy understanding and A is a constant given as 0.3 second inverse and the coordinates are measured in meters. Now, uh, A is given as 0.3 second inverse and the coordinates are measured in meters. Now, just like you marked uh, uh, two perpendicular lines in the earlier example, in this case we will mark a region, a square is marked in the fluid as shown at t equal to 0. So, this is the square marked at t equal to 0. Evaluate the new positions of the four corner points something like what we did in the earlier case after 1.35 seconds after some time interval. Evaluate the rates of linear deformation in the x and y directions. Rates of linear deformation is nothing is another way of saying uh, rate of normal strain or normal strain rate in the x and y directions. And then compare area A dash B dash C dash that will be the new area A dash B dash C dash D dash will be the new area at uh, 1.35 seconds and then we have to compare with that area with the area A B C D at t equal to 0 whether it will change or not we will see that okay. and then comment on the significance of this result. Okay. So, we have flow over a corner and then we are in this region we are let us say marked with some uh, red color dye this uh, square region and we are tracking that. Okay. Now, how are we going to track that? Now, tracking a particular point is something similar to what we had done earlier. If you track a particle is equivalent to finding the path line of that particular particle. Okay. So, find position of particles. So, we have four particles A, B, C and then D. We will have to evaluate that position after some time interval which is nothing but finding the path line. If you want to show the end uh, the progress of these points then we draw the path line or if you want the only end point then the end point of the path line will give you the final position. So, now, so we will find out the path line so that at any time t we will know the position of a, b, c and d. Okay. So, let us find a general expression. So, we will have to recall what we discussed when we uh, did examples on path lines and we discussed the theory for path lines. So, that is the velocity field. So, finding out the path line the physical principle what we used was that the velocity of the fluid velocity of the fluid that is Eulerian description which is equal to the velocity of the particle given by rate of its uh, displacement in the present case in the x direction. Okay. And this we have used uh, uh, when we discussed uh, when we derived substantial derivative when you discussed path line same concept, concept is being used here. The Eulerian velocity field is equal to velocity of the particle which happens to be at that which happens to be at that particular location which is given by the rate of change of its displacement the present case x direction. And so, in the left hand side we evaluate the velocity field in terms of x p and that is why substituted x in terms of x p. So, now because our coordinates are x I am going back to x, but that is a physical principle. Okay. So, d x by d t is equal to x. So, we have to just integrate this do variable separation integrate and what are the initial conditions 
at time t equal to 0 x naught. What is x naught? Based on the particle which are going to take let us say if are going to take particle a then x naught is 1. So, if you are taking going to take particle c x naught is 2. So, x naught tells you the x coordinate of the particle at time t equal to 0 and you are going to find out x at any time t and of course, simple integration and uh, rearrangement gives you x is equal to x naught e power a t. Okay. Now, let us do the same exercise for the y direction. We will equate the y component of velocity to the rate of change of y displacement of the particle and here I, the y component of velocity is evaluated in terms of the y coordinate of the particle. Once again going back in terms of y I get this differential equation relating y and time dy by dt is equal to minus a y variable separation integration and now the initial condition like in the earlier case t equal to 0 y equal to y naught. So, if you take particle d the initial y coordinate is 1 if you take particle b the initial y coordinate is uh, 2. So, integration rearrangement gives you this equation relating the y coordinate of the particle as a function of time. So, at any time t you can calculate the x coordinate and the y coordinate and in this particular case we are asked to calculate the coordinates. If you want to track this, uh, this region as you progress then you can substitute for different values of time and get the x and y coordinates. This example what we are asked to do is to find the coordinates at t equal to 1.35 seconds. So, in this table the first row shows the coordinates at time t equal to 0, second row shows the coordinates. How did I obtain? I just substituted t equal to 1.35 and x naught y naught depends on the particle. So, in fact, these are the x naught y naught and similarly for particle b, c and then d. So, substitute x naught y naught, substitute t equal to 1.35, then you will get the new x coordinate y coordinate of point a similarly for b, c and then d. So, the second row gives the x and y coordinate of a, b, c, d after a time interval of 1.35 seconds. Now, uh, see the concept of path line was discussed uh, some time back and we have now used it and interpreting in a different way. What we have actually calculated is only path line, but now we are going to analyze in terms of uh, uh, what happens to this uh, region and uh, what is the implication of the velocity field on, on this particular region. Okay. Okay, so, let us uh, show the old and new position of the corner points. So, the <coughs> this is a square region marked at time t equal to 0 and it has become a it has become a rectangle at t equal to 1.35 seconds. The, these are the coordinates of a dash, b dash, c dash and d dash and it has become a uh, rectangle. Okay. So, let us see how do we understand this. Okay. Now, the velocity field was given by a x i minus a y j. So, the rates of linear deformation let us calculate them the normal strain rates dou v x by dou x is equal to a in this for this velocity field the x component depends on x. So, if you differentiate you get a non-zero value unlike the earlier example. So, in general whenever the x component depends on the x coordinate you will have a non-zero normal strain rate okay. and of course, the value is 0.3 second inverse which means that there is elongation in the x direction. Now, let us evaluate the normal strain rate in the other direction which is dou v y by dou y. So, differentiate the y component of velocity with respect to y you get minus a result is minus 0.3 second inverse and which means that there is shortening in the y direction okay. and that is what you have seen. 
if you see compare B C and B dash C dash there is elongation which is for line segment along the x direction and if you compare A B and then A dash B dash there is a shortening in the line segment which was along the uh, y direction. Okay. So, for line segment along uh, x direction there is elongation as shown by this uh, uh, value of 0.3 second inverse line segment along y direction there is decrease in that length and given by this minus 0.3 second inverse. Should keep in mind that as we have discussed earlier this tells about rate of elongation and also rate of change of length per unit length. Okay. So, if you take a line at some time instant t some time instant later what is the increase in length divided by the original length and this is instantaneous value. What about rate of uh, angular deformation that is gamma dot x y which is dou v y by dou x plus dou v x by dou y is 0 because the v x does not depend on y, v y does not depend on x. If only if it is v x depends on y like in the last case then you will have a non-zero angular deformation or in a, let us say in a two dimensional case if v y depends on x then then again you will have a non zero angular deformation. So, in this case there is no change in angle when I say no change in angle if you take two line segments perpendicular to each other they remain as such that is what you see here also the angle b a d is 90 degrees the angle b dash a dash d dash also 90 degrees there is no change in angle at all okay. that is why I said earlier example we had angular deformation and of course, rotation in this example angular deformation is 0 we will see rotation is also 0, but we have uh, <coughs> normal strain rates. So, the rate of rotation omega r at x y is uh, same expression as earlier with the minus sign of course, it is 0 ok. Only if it depends v y depends on x, v x depends on y you will have, but they are not depending on x 1 y respectively ok. Uh, such a flow is called irrotational where you do not have any rotation uh, such a uh, flow is called uh, irrotational ok. Kay. And that is what you see in this animation. Now, for showing this animation I calculate the coordinates at every instant of time. This a dash b dash c dash d dash tells you the coordinates after some time t equal to 1.35 seconds, but now for this animation I cal find out the uh, path line equations substitute t equal to 0 0.1 0 0.2 0 0.3 whatever time interval and then calculate the position and plot them and uh, the region uh, covered by a b c d is shown as red. So, that we see it as a region moving ok. And uh, as you see it also represents the flow around the corner if we, we have seen the streamlines where we had flow around the corner and that is also represent that is also represented by this region which you are tracking ok. And, uh, and we can see that the square becoming rectangle how the square gradually becomes rectangle. This was only initial position initial square and then let us say a final rectangle at t equal to 1.35. Here you see how the square evolves gradually to the rectangle and of course, remember it is continuously deforms that always should be kept in mind. We said fluid continuously deforms. So, as long as the flow and as long as you track this will continue to deform. Of course, for the sake of simulation we have stopped and replaying it again and again, but otherwise continuously deforms ok. So, in the earlier example no normal strain rates only angular deformation rotation were present in this particular in this example normal strain rates are present angular deformation and rotation are absent ok. okay. This is relatively a simpler case compared to the earlier case when you have angular deformation rotation it becomes a uh, little difficult to analyze in terms of the what you see and what we analyze. Remember when we said in the earlier example what we see is a summation of all the effects. 
here because no angular deformation and rotation whatever you see is representing whatever we calculated in terms of normal strain rates. Earlier it was representing both a combined effect of both the deformation and the um, rotation. Now let us calculate uh, the volumetric strain rate and uh, okay, let that be simulation be running. Okay. So, for the volumetric strain rate we start with the velocity field which is uh, A x i minus A y j. We have seen how to express volumetric strain rate which is uh, the fractional rate of change of volume okay. and uh, we have seen that can be expressed in terms of del dot v okay. and del dot v has all these three terms, but in the present case we will have only the first two terms. Okay. So, let us evaluate them dou v x by dou x is a which is 0 0.3 dou v y by dou y is minus a which is minus 0 0.3 giving 0. What does it tell you? There is no change in volume, rate of change of volume was normalized, fractional rate of change of volume is 0, the volume of the element does not change with respect to time. So, let us in this present case it is not volume it is area because we are considering 2D. So, let us verify that numerically the area of the initial square both the sides are 1 unit or 1 meters. So, 1 meter square the final area should also be 1 meter square let us calculate that what is the final area A dash B dash C dash D dash if you consider points A dash and D dash the length of the line A dash D dash which is difference in the x coordinate of uh, a dash d dash which is 3 minus 3 by 2. Now, the uh, height is the difference in the y coordinate of let us say a dash and b dash. So, it is uh, 4 by 3 minus 2 by 3 and that is what is written here 3 minus 3 by 2 into 4 by 3 minus 2 by 3 which gives us 1 meter squared. So, we have theoretically proved that the volume or area cannot change based on our calculation also we have proved that the area does not change. So, no change in volume of fluid element why is it happening the two rates of linear deformation are equal and opposite. The normal strain rate in the x direction is positive because length is increasing and normal strain rate in the y direction is negative because the length is decreasing they are equal and opposite hence there is no uh, change in the area. Okay. Whatever increase in area because of the increase in length along x direction is compensated by the decrease in area because of the decrease in length along the y direction. Of course, such a flow is incompressible that is what we have seen. I like to discuss another view point remember del dot v we expressed or uh, discussed the significance in two different ways. The present way is that fractional rate of change of volume. Okay. Now, what is the earlier way? It was relating to a Eulerian view point the present view point is Lagrangian the earlier view point is Eulerian and remember these terms were derived as part of the continuity equation where we took as control volume like this. Okay. Let us say if you take dou V x by dou x how did it come we took the mass flow leaving to the right face mass flow entering the left face and then we took the difference and so dou V x by dou x represents say let us say we have rho there it represents net mass flow leaving the x direction per unit volume for the moment uh, leave per unit volume. So, just represents something like net mass flow leaving in the x direction because there is no rho it tells net rate at which volume leaves in the x direction and what about dou v y by dou y that tells you net rate at which volume leaves in the y direction of course, per unit volume. Now, so, if you look from a 
Eulerian viewpoint, if you take a small location, what happens is that because dou V x by dou x is positive, which means that there is net flow leaving in the x direction, and then because dou V by, by dou y is negative, which means that there is net inflow in the y direction, they compensate each other, and hence the net rate of flow volume um, through all the control surfaces is equal to 0. Okay. So, that is two different viewpoints for del dot V. This example does not require the second viewpoint, but because we have discussed uh, the two, two viewpoints of del dot V and numerically we can see in this example that uh, there is net outflow in one direction, the x direction, net inflow in the y direction and hence the net flow, uh, if you sum up all the through all the directions is 0, other way of looking at it. Yeah, just to want to, uh, not a full example, but uh, when we almost began the course, we introduced what a fluid particle is and we defined a fluid particle as a small deforming volume and then we took this example and showed that the fluid particle should rep represent whatever is happening to the uh, flow field and then we said uh, along the flow field, the particle elongates, becomes smaller etcetera in the other direction etcetera. And we also showed this animation where we said the earlier title was demonstration of fluid particle, the same example now I say call it as a flow through a converging nozzle. And then we had simulations in two scales, one when I just ran <coughs> we were tracking uh, the fluid particle and then we said should be very, very small and then we said uh, for the uh, same time interval, it uh, travels longer distance as it approaches uh, to uh, as it travels along the length of the channel because it is a converging channel, the velocity increases along the direction of flow. Then what we discussed was we zoomed this region, small re this region and then that is what we saw in the right animation where we can clearly see that the fluid for the fluid element the length of the fluid element increases and then the height decreases okay. and then the statement which I made at that point of time was that the length increases because the velocity increases along the flow direction and I said correspondingly there is a decrease in the height of the fluid element. Now, they need not be accepted as such. Now, we can by theory by based on our discussion, we can explain those statements. I will just repeat, earlier we have looked at this uh, element, fluid element or fluid particle and said that its length increases uh, along the flow direction and height decreases along the flow direction. We explain saying that the length increases because the velocity increases along the flow direction. Correspondingly, I said the height decreases. Now, we can uh, physically uh, reason out these two statements that is what we will do in the next slide. Now, what is the velocity field for a converging nozzle is given by this expression a into 1 plus x i minus a y j. But the way in which we should view is that the x velocity is a function of only x the y velocity is a function of only y, that is how we should view for our purpose for calculating rate of normal strain, shear strain, the x component, x component of velocity depends on x, then as we have calculated in the previous example, we have a non-zero value of dou v x by dou x and that is positive, why the x component increases along the x direction, that is also is line with the physics of the uh, geometry because of the reduction in area the x component should increase. Now, what about the, the y direction? There is a, it is minus a and you have a minus 0.3 second inverse and there is reduction in the height of the fluid element. So, because of this only, when we run the simulation, because of this only, this tells you that there is elongation, elongation in the x direction. Now, this clearly justifies our earlier statement that because the velocity increases 
along the x direction there is elongation of the fluid element. Earlier we made as a qualitative statement, now we can we are quantitatively establishing that statement. If you look at the normal strain rate in the y direction it is negative and that is why you see a decrease in the height of the uh, fluid element. Okay. Now we made a statement that accordingly or correspondingly there is a decrease in uh, the height of the fluid element. How do you explain that? Before that like in the previous case there is no angular deformation, there is no rotation because V x depends on x only, V y depends on y only. If you calculate del dot V like in the earlier case you get a value of 0 that is this explains why accordingly or correspondingly because it is incompressible flow del dot V should be 0 and so when there is increase in increase in length along x direction it should be compensated by a decrease in length along the y direction. That is why we said increase in length along x direction because of increase in velocity correspondingly there is a decrease in length along the y direction. Why that correspondingly? Because del dot v is incompressible, uh, del dot v is 0 for incompressible flow. So, when one direction there is rate of increase in length there is a decrease in rate of length in the other direction. Okay. So, we have kind of connected, we have seen this in the previous example in terms of concepts, just want to connect this example with the uh, simulation which I have seen earlier where we introduced the concept of particle. Okay. Okay. So, I think that brings us to the close of our uh, this lecture where we <coughs> have discussed uh, fluids a strain rate in fluids analogous to strain in solids. Okay. So, in terms of a journey to the navier strokes we were here where we have derived the differential form of linear momentum balance with the viscous stresses on the right hand side. We said we need to express that in terms of the velocity gradients. To understand velocity gradients we took a diversion to solid mechanics understood uh, normal strain, shear strain, displacement gradient, rotation. We also understood how to decompose or split uh, differential displacement in terms of in terms of deformation <coughs> and rotation. And now we have analogously explained for the case of fluids, but everywhere we add rate. Okay, so everywhere we add rate. So normal strain rate, shear strain rate, and velocity gradient, and then the differential velocity is sum of deformation rate plus rotation rate. Superficially we say just addition of rate, but we discuss that based on the difference between the behavior of solids and fluids. And of course, now we will go back once again to solid mechanics to relate stress and then strain. We need to relate viscous stress and velocity gradients and uh, we said instead of velocity gradients we will relate only to the rate of deformation. But before doing that we will go to solid mechanics once again to understand and relate stress and strain. So, that when you come to fluid mechanics we can easily extend and relate the viscous stress and strain rate. Okay. Of course, this we will understand as we go along. Okay. To summarize uh, we started with the distinction between solids and fluids okay, in terms of response to a, a tangential force and we understood it is a deformation for solids, it is rate of deformation for fluids and rate of deformation could be normal and uh, shear strain rate, one is rate of change of length, other is rate of change of angle. And we also discussed that they are material derivatives of strain. Okay. We also discussed about rate of rotation. We discussed about volumetric uh, strain rate, and <coughs> the volumetric strain rate is uh, represented by the divergence of velocity field, and so we understood two two ways of uh, or physical significance of the divergence of velocity in two different ways. 
and based on that we express the equation of continuity from the material particle viewpoint. We discuss the velocity gradient tensor analogous to the displacement gradient tensor for solids and then we related the strain rate to the velocity gradient and we also discuss the decomposition of fluid motion which is expressing the velocity gradient tensor as sum of strain rate tensor and rotation rate tensor.